Hi, I'm Steve Higgins, and this is Allison Schmidt with HD Wealth Strategies. Unfortunately, in this industry, clients and investors face a lot of problems with regards to communication with their financial advisors. In fact, in surveys, when investors are asked why they left their previous advisor, they usually refer to a problem with communication. Well, here at HD Wealth Strategies, we address that using a process in delivering an experience that prioritizes communication with our clients. Exactly. And, you know, as a part of that process, one thing that we do that's pretty unique to our firm is what's called a behalf meeting. So um, what happens is if one of the members of our team reaches out, you know, to you as our clients to try to set up a time for us to get together, whether it's, you know, an update, a review, a specific, you know, piece that we wanted to make sure to talk about, and you're not available, let's say you're traveling, you're spending time with family, whatever that looks like, and we're not able to get together face to face you can know that we're always still going to be working on your behalf and Steve and I will actually have that meeting on your behalf whether you're there or not and then we're going to put together a video send it over to you so that we can give you you know that update that review you know kind of that that specific plan that you're looking at we've put together this process to make sure that no matter what's happening in your world we can be uh, kind of seamlessly integrated into that and that no matter what you're going to stay updated for those financial future plans. So um, we have a video that's going to kind of show you what that what that meeting looks like but it, it, it's definitely unique to us and something we're pretty proud of. That's right. Hi, it's Steve and Allie. We wanted hey to there. reach out to you. Um, we met on your behalf, you know, as part of our process. Um, we want to make sure that we're staying in uh, constant communication with you, and we know life can get busy. Yeah. Um, we know it's a little bit hard to get together here in the office and meet face-to-face -face, um, every time. And we know that this is no replacement for uh, the relationship and meeting face-to-face, -face, but we want to make sure we reported back to you and let you know the results or any updates or anything that we found uh, as we met on your behalf. Exactly, and we're going to start out with just a, a quick economic update for you. We put together a video, you know, I'd say that the last uh, six months have been exciting, I guess, if right. you could put it that way. Mildly. Um, exactly, yeah. so we're going to do a quick economic update, and then we'll be right back with more personal details for you. Start off with the market sell-off. The Dow sinking more than 600 points at the lows of the day, closing down about 550 points. For those keeping score at home, that's nearly 1,000 points in two days. And the bears certainly on the attack. The Dow and S&P 500. Around the raised. globe, China striking back at the U.S. today, saying it will raise tariffs on $60 billion of U.S. goods yeah, look, beginning uh, June. I, I don't know. Are the Chinese overplaying their hand? I have to tell you that when you look at what That's the, it. That is a new closing high for the S&P 500. We surpassed 29. It's only May in 2019 has already shown us that the economy and the markets have a lot of resiliency. I mean, after dropping 20% last fall, the S&P 500 rallied to new highs just by the end of April. And while there are certainly short-term concerns surrounding the trade conflict with China, we can say for certain that the prognosticators and talking heads that were stoking fears of a recession by this summer were overblown and inaccurate, to say the very least. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, while the markets, you know, certainly have recovered, we want to encourage you to be prepared for continued volatility, mm -hmm. which is really normal. We fully anticipate this type of normal volatility throughout the presidential cycle. Um, and ups and downs are to be expected. And we believe that staying the course is absolutely the right thing to do. And it's really been the right thing to do throughout history. That's right. All right, well, I think that presents a really nice backdrop to what we're going to go into now. Now, on your screen, you see allocation, and Steve's going to go into a little bit more detail on that. But really, we wanted to make sure that you know that all of this and kind of how the allocation is set up and moving forward is always based in that personal investment policy that we review every time. So, you know, like we've talked about in the past, you guys are invested in a moderate growth type portfolio. So, you know, we certainly wouldn't expect to take on all of the risk or volatility of the stock market, but, you know, the, the portfolio certainly, um, certainly prioritizes growth over, you know, income or stability of principle. And we think that that is absolutely in line with that investment policy, but also in line with, you know, your future financial goals. So when we talk about retirement income and, you know, setting up that income stream for you guys here over the next five years, I think you're really going to be able to position this portfolio to provide that income stream steadily, you know, um, no matter what the market throws at us, but also um, be able to have an increase 
in that income stream because like we've always talked about inflation is a real thing and you know congratulations to you guys for prioritizing you know saving and living with your in your means for so long that, that you really have set yourself up to succeed in kind of this next chapter but you know I, retirement certainly doesn't end in a couple of years you know we're talking about likely decades so we just want to make sure that that you're prepared and in that lens we think that this type of allocation is still absolutely appropriate for what you guys are trying to do Right, Ali, and thank you. And talking about that allocation, looking at the portfolio today as it sits, you're in about 25% bonds and cash and about 75% equity. That doesn't necessarily tell the entire story because when we go into the equity part of the portfolio, what you'll see among it, within that diversification, we've got different pieces of the portfolio that are designed um, with the expectation that they provide more predictable outcomes. The piece of the portfolio that is structured products, again, that's the piece that we've talked about uh, that is designed to um, provide predictability where maybe the equity markets on their own um, cannot over time. And in addition to that, the piece of the market, this piece here with the market neutral, allows us to just smooth out the, the ride of the portfolio without taking on too much interest rate risk that does exist in the fixed income piece of the portfolio. Um, going back and looking at the other, um, the, the other uh, section of the portfolio in the fixed income, you can see here, well, while we have diversification um, in the bonds, we are prioritizing shorter term uh, fixed income investments in order, again, to decrease the amount of interest rate risk that does exist in the portfolio and really make sure that this fixed income piece really is the more, um, the more docile and less volatile piece of the portfolio. One of the things you would have noticed last fall is as the market, the stock market was correcting, uh, culminating with the 20% correction in the S&P 500 on December 24th, the rebalances that took place in your portfolio effectively were adding stock position as stocks were becoming less expensive. Um, that, was, that worked out wonderfully as we saw in the first quarter of this year with the stock markets up. Um, you saw in April another rebalance that, that basically removed those positions, put those back in fixed income, and uh, essentially put the life rafts back in the boat. Um, I just want to, I just want to number one applaud you for staying the course, and then allowing us to do our job because I think working together we were really able to accomplish some things. Exactly, um, it's a good point. And then in this next, um, this next slide, what you see is your year-to-date performance at 11.03 percent. I think that's really a tribute again to um, you staying the course, um, taking advantage of the markets when you did, and allowing us to do our jobs. Additionally, I think it's interesting um, when we talk about the expectation of volatility going forward, um, I think that's just it. I, we expect there to be continued volatility going forward, but that, that's been the case. That was the case last year. Even this year, if you look, yes, the stock markets are up, but that top line, those are your equities. Okay? And as you can see, the equities are where you're getting your growth year to date. It's also where you're getting some sleep, sleepless nights, and we would anticipate that to continue to be the case. The second line that you see here, these are your bonds. Well, your bonds are certainly having a good year. I mean, year to date, I think we're talking close to 3% in your bond portfolio. That's fantastic. Kind of pales in comparison today to equity returns of 14.04% in your portfolio. Now, 2018, that would have been the rever reverse of the case. But we do know that uh, stock markets generally are up four out of five years um, with, with volatility always. Um, so what we would say is, you know, continue to feel volatility as we move towards a presidential election cycle. We don't think that's going to change, but we still think valuations remain compelling. Um, we believe in the way that your portfolio is put together. Mm -hmm. So with that, I'm going to, you know, wanted to make sure that you know that if you have any questions about this meeting or anything that we're doing on your behalf to always let us know. This is no, uh, this is never going to be a replacement for the face-to-face -face conversations, but we hope that it helps. Yeah, absolutely. And from a planning perspective too, you know, just like years past, you know, as a part of our process, please make sure to send over that completed 2018 tax return just so we can give a review, make sure that we're not missing out on any tax planning opportunities or, or way to, ways to make things a little bit more tax efficient for you as as you kind of move forward. So um, right. thanks again for tuning in. We do have uh, one more little, little kind of announcement kind of looking at the year ahead, uh, but we appreciate you. And, and certainly like Steve said, this doesn't replace the face-to-face the -face and the communication. So please, please reach out and let us know what else we can be doing for you. Experience is important. You certainly expect an experience, a certain type of experience when you go to a nice restaurant or book a nice hotel for your vacation. You know, here at HD Wealth Strategies, we feel like most investors just don't get the type of experience they deserve. 
From the very beginning, we have made our clients the absolute priority. Helping you reach your goals is our job and we try to do that while providing a higher level of experience. We are constantly working to find better ways to make the process of financial planning better for you. This video and reviews like this are examples of just that. Yes, exactly. And, and in that spirit, you know, you, you may or may not know, but I am currently pregnant with our second little one. So exciting. Um, and I certainly wanted to share that, you know, wonderful news with you guys, but also wanted to just let you know from a business standpoint, really how things are going to be handled. Because I think it's really important that we communicate right. around this. And um, as many of you know, Steve, obviously, in addition to being my business partner, has been a really supportive friend, which, which has been awesome. Um, and we've been planning for my absence for months. You know, we started talking about this back in January um, of this year, and we actually made a huge effort to move all of our 2019 client strategic update meetings to be completed within the first eight months of this year. Because really, as a part of the experience like Steve was talking about, we prioritize meeting with clients as a team the two of us together, you know, whenever possible, and have really tried to structure our schedules to make sure that, you know, we can have those meetings as usual usual this year and maybe just a little bit earlier in the year so that, you know, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to take a little bit of time off. But right. um, anyway, we wanted to pass along that information to you. As always, please let us know if, if you have any questions or there's anything that we can help with. And thank you so much for watching your your behalf meeting and um, let us know what you thought. Yeah, thank you so much. We appreciate it.